The HTTP context object is an object that we're going to be working with a ton as we develop out our Adonis application. It's an object that's going to be provided to us via our route handlers, middlewares, HTTP hooks, and exception handlers as we progress through our requests lifecycle. Before we get into routing in the next lesson, it's something I at least want you to be aware of, what it has on it, and how it's passed through our requests lifecycle. So to start with, the HTTP context is an object that is unique to our user's specific individual request. So anytime a user requests a page, submits a form, submits an API request, we are going to receive a unique HTTP context object about that user's request throughout that user's request lifecycle. And the way that user's HTTP context object for their request is passed from one lifecycle portion to another is by reference. So for example, if we mutate the HTTP context at all within our middleware, that mutation will carry through to the route handler. And then if we throw an error within our route handler, once the request reaches the exception handler for that error that we threw in our route handler, it's still going to maintain that mutation that we made within our middleware. So it's also a way for us to provide information to ourselves as our user's request passes from one portion of our application to another. Now, since Adonis uses TypeScript, it does have its own type, and that type is called the HTTP context contract. In most cases, Adonis is going to be able to provide the HTTP context contract type for our HTTP context object. However, as they state here in controllers, that is not the case. So whenever we're working within controllers, which we'll get into later, that is an area where we will explicitly need to provide that this is an HTTP context object being provided to our method. In addition to that, whenever we extend our HTTP context object, we also need to tell TypeScript about that extension by extending the interface of the HTTP context contract with that added property or method along with that property or methods type. This then informs TypeScript about that property, its type, and that will prevent TypeScript from complaining about that property or method not actually existing within our application. Now, another thing to note here is that what's within our HTTP context does vary depending on what your application has installed within it. For example, we have yet to cover authentication. We don't have the auth module installed within our application yet. Therefore, within our HTTP context, we do not have an auth property. However, once we get around to authentication and we install the auth module within our application, we'll then have an auth property within our HTTP context that we can use to authenticate a user, deauthenticate a user, and get the actively authenticated user for a specific individual request. The same thing with view and a couple of these other properties here. So we selected the web project structure whenever we created our application, meaning that we're going to need some sort of way to render out pages. And that's what this view property allows us to do. Had we selected the API project structure, in most cases, APIs don't need to render pages out, so it's not going to need to make use of this view property. Therefore, it doesn't have the view module installed out of the box. So it won't have this view property in its HTTP context from the get-go. However, you can install the view module within the API project structure, and in that case, you would have the view property within your HTTP context. So it all varies depending on what you have installed within your application. And so if we actually pop open our application here and we head into the start directory and we go into our routes and view our default route definition that we have here, we're going to bypass everything at this point in time except for this callback function right here. So this callback function is our route handler, and this is what's provided our HTTP context. So where we're using this view right here, we are extracting that out of our HTTP context and using it to render out the welcome page. And that is how we respond to a particular request for our homepage. If we take this view extraction here and we just change this to CTX for context, and we inspect with IntelliSense what all we have within this CTX here, you can see that we have an inspect method, which is a helper method that we can use to inspect what exactly our HTTP context has on it. And you can see within the documentation, this is an example output of that inspect method call. So that's what that allows us to do. We have a logger, which we can use to log information out to our applications console or our application logs if we're in production. Params, if we have any route parameters. A request property to get any information about our user specific requests. We can get the URL with this. We can get query string information with this. We can get information off of the request's body any files, things of that nature off of the request. We have a response property, which we can use to mutate how our application is going to respond to a request. So we can set things like headers here, we can set cookies, and we can send back particular response data using the response property as well. A route object containing things like what the route pattern was, uh, which route was matched and things like that. 
the route key, which is a unique key for each individual route. So we would be provided that route specific unique key, session information, subdomains, if our route has any subdomains within it, and then the view property right here. So this is what we have available within our application at this point and time. As we build out our application, add more modules, this is going to expand accordingly. Very similar to how the ACLI expands its command set as we install additional modules as well. So just as packages can extend our HTTP context, we too can extend our HTTP context as well. And there's a couple of different ways to go about it. We're just going to cover this one here for right now. Uh, so you can extend it just like a normal old object. So we can put a new property on it and that will extend it just fine. However, you're gonna notice that we have this little red squiggly saying that test does not exist on our HTTP context contract. And that's because we need to extend that HTTP context contract with our new property. So we can head into our contracts here. We can create a new file. We'll call this HTTP context and we'll give it a TS extension. Okay, and then within here, we're going to want to declare module at IOC Adonis core HTTP context. And then within here, all that we need to do is extend our interface for our HTTP context contract with that new property. So we're gonna have test of type string. Give that a save head back over to our route, and you'll see that red squiggly is gone. So now when this route handler gets called, we're going to extend our HTTP context with a property called test and value of testing. And then for example, if we throw an error here, once our application reaches the error handler, this test property will remain on our HTTP context for this particular request, since the HTTP context is passed throughout our request lifecycle by reference. So that's really all that I wanted to cover with this lesson. I wanted to get you familiar with what the HTTP context is, how it's passed, how we can extend it. And that I feel gets us nice and prepared to go over routing starting in the next lesson.